Your Highness, I have bad news to tell you. Hang on, this is the best bit. No, this is serious. It's really important. The seas all over the world are becoming more acidic. It will affect everyone and everything in the sea, and is a lot more important than your stupid soaps. Fine. Tell me more. Oh. Well, when these two molecules bond together, they create an acidic molecule known as carbonic acid. When this... What? Well, the two main points of this are that the chemical reactions between carbon dioxide and water are causing the acidity of the sea to increase, and the carbonate ions in the sea are decreasing. These calcium carbonate ions are important to shellfish, as they need to get calcium to build bone and shell. This also affects their internal functions. Lots of creatures will starve. As one creature dies, another starves. When this dies, another starves. And when this dies... Silence! What can we do about this? Uh, sir, I'm only a scientist. You must resolve this. Okay, let me find out what's going on around the globe. Turn the television on and switch to CTV. Hi, I'm Michelle Massa reporting live at the scene of what is to believe to be the first casualty of ocean acidification. So, Mr. Action, can you tell us any more? Everybody, watch out. Our homes are crumbling away. What do you mean? What's happening? The oceans are getting more acidic and it's eroding our coral homes. This is disastrous. Hi, I'm Ray and I'm going to be your doctor today. Together with the bleaching from climate change, we really need to work together to get a solution. <coughs> Watch out, it'll get you next. Back to the studio, Phil. Welcome to CTV Chat Show with your host, me, Brittany Starr. In the beautiful islands of Hawaii, I have a guest with me today. You'll be shocked when you see the state that his body's in. Hello, Barney, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Brittany. It's a pleasure to be here. So, tell me a little bit about your condition. I'm not really one of the most popular sea creatures in my school. In fact, a lot of them pick on me. One day at lunchtime, I was in the playground minding my own business when some bullfish came up to me. At first, they just started calling me names. Look at his arms, they're really hairy. Come on, guys, let's get him. They were biting on my arms and pulling on them as if it was a tug-of-war game. Let me go, let me go, that really hurts. The next thing I knew, my arms were no longer attached to my body and were inside the mouth of a horrible bullfish. I can understand that this has been a very traumatic experience for you, Bernie. Are there any long-term effects because of this? Humans have caused the huge problems of acidification in the ocean. Basically, because of this, I have been paralysed. My growth rate has slowed and my muscles have been used up making more of my skeleton. Thank you for coming in to share your story with us, Bernie. This is a serious issue. King Poseidon, can you help? You know, I'm not at all worried about this acid oceans thing. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be affected all the way up here. Mm. I've got loads of food. Why should I care? Actually, when the oceans get more acidic, the phytoplankton will die. I don't care about the phytoplankton. All I need is lots of clams, not some phytoplankton. Mm. Well, if the plankton die, so are your clams. It's all to do with the food chain. What's that? All food chains start with the sun. Since the beginning of time, the sun has provided producers with energy to grow. Producers such as phytoplankton. The producer in our food chain is Derek the Diatom, and he floats around the ocean all day and is food to zooplankton, such as own the ostropod. Zooplankton come in many different forms. Some grow into lobsters, some into crabs, and some just get eaten by clams. Clams sit on the bottom of the sea, and they get eaten by... Me! Yes, that's right. So, if the plankton die, then I won't get my clams. Once the plankton goes, then pop, pop, pop. Oh... Am I the only one who will be affected? No, everyone will be affected, even me. Oh dear, I really hope that King Poseidon can think of something. Otherwise, pop! Hmm, this is really bad. I need to do something. But what? That's it. All we have to do is reduce the carbon dioxide levels in the sea. Uh, Doctopus, how are we going to sort that out? Well, it's a big job. But if we can cut carbon dioxide emissions, use renewable energy, and stop burning fossil fuels... Um, sorry, King Poseidon, but, um, I just heard what you said from outside. You were eavesdropping! Well, I just want to say that we can't really do anything. It's the humans that have to change. 
That's a good point. We're sea dwellers. We are absolutely useless at this stage. How are we going to tell the humans about this? Hmm. Sir, what if we link your trident to some of the equipment I have in my lab? We may be able to broadcast a message to the humans using their satellites. Yes, that might just do it. If we make the humans realise what they have done, then we might just be able to change things before it's too late. Right, let's get ready to rumble. Turn on the aerial and camera for broadcast. You're live, sir. Attention, humans. I am Poseidon, Lord of the Sea. You may not be aware of the problem of rising ocean acidification. Your burning of fossil fuels is causing us and our habitats to suffer. The acidity is rising in the oceans and it is all your fault. The carbon dioxide you are releasing into the atmosphere is being absorbed by the sea. Ever since you have started to build your factories, the extra carbon dioxide entering our seas has caused a 30% increase in acidity. This is a big problem as it dissolves our shells and skeletons, causing us to be more vulnerable. You need to save energy and to preserve our planet and our oceans. You could use renewable supplies which is using solar energy and the power of our ocean's waves. Please stop destroying our habitats and sea creatures. Think of what you have and use it wisely. Act now.